Police Chief Daryl Jones, Fire Chief Richard Kilgore, School Board President Mr. Galvan, School Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Avery, and all active duty and veterans of our armed services, and to you, the student body, for joining us today in honoring our fallen heroes for the tragic events of September 11, 2001. <laughs> today, we honor their memory, so their deaths may not have been in vain. We as a country have united as a family in mourning for those who have perished. The tragedy of September 11th will never be forgotten. Today, we will not only remember those who died in the World Trade Centers and the hijacked planes, but the firefighters and police officers who gave their lives to save others. As we go through this ceremony, please remember to honor our fallen heroes of September 11th, because in the end, as Americans, we are all one family. Patriot Day Proclamation, Chapter 1 of Title 36, United States Code is amended by adding the following new section, Section 144. September 11th is Patriot Day Proclamation. The President is requested to issue each year a proclamation calling on the states and local governments and the people of the United States to observe Patriot Day and appropriate programs and activities, to display the flag of the United States and have staff on Patriot Day, and to observe a moment of silence on Patriot Day in honor of the individuals who lost their lives as a result of the terrorist attacks against the United States that occurred on September 11, 2001. Now please help me in welcoming our guest speaker and our principal, Ms. Liz Harris. First of all, I'd like to say good morning, Panther Champions. It is an honor for me to humbly speak to you this morning to honor the memory of our fellow Americans who lost their lives on September the 11th, 2001. It is unbelievable to think that students, you were five, six, seven, eight years old when this occurred. Before I continue, I would like to thank our parents, teachers, administrators, firemen, police, first responders, civic leaders, newspaper and media represented here, members of our military branches and other guests for taking time to be here this morning to share in this memorial alongside with the NJROTC and all students of Aransas Pass High School. We must never forget, on September the 11th, 2001, 10 years ago, there was an attack on America. There are some men that decided that they didn't like what America stands for, freedom, liberty, and the rights of men and women of all races, backgrounds, and beliefs. So on the morning of September 11th, 2001, they hijacked four planes and attacked America in a terrible way. I'd like to share with you a story of one person's personal experience for that day to help us get a sense of what normal, everyday people were experiencing. This is one person's account who is actually there. On the evening of September 11, 2001, six dads from my hometown of Rumson, New Jersey, didn't come home from work. Their car sat empty in the parking lot of the commuter ferry they'd taken to Manhattan that morning. Their seats at the dinner table have been empty ever since. My brother Mike was one of those dads. He and more than 2,700 other people were killed at the World Trade Center in New York. Ten members of Al-Qaeda, an Islamic terrorist group, crashed two hijacked planes into the Twin Towers. The 9-11 attacks were the deadliest on United States soil since the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor in December 1941, and they would change the nation profoundly. I was on the commuter ferry headed to downtown Manhattan when the first plane struck the North Tower. It was 8.46 a.m. I knew that my brother, who had started his job as an equities trader at Cantor Fitzgerald a week earlier, would already be at his desk. 
desk. I would soon learn that he was on the 104th floor of that 110th story building. As you can see, the ferry captain said over the bullhorn, a plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. We could see the Trade Center and the skyscrapers of Lower Manhattan still 40 minutes away with aching clarity as Mike, an avid body surfer, surely would have noted. It was a perfect beach day, crisp and cloudless, cloudless as he looked out the window. I tried him on his cell phone several times but couldn't get through. Service had already become sporadic, so I couldn't reach his wife, Lynn, or any other family members either. As the ferry continued across the Hudson River to New York, we watched smoke sweeping from the upper floors of the North Tower. At first, it seemed as if the crash had been a terrible accident. Then just 17 minutes later, a second plane sliced through the top of the South Tower. Everyone gasped. America, we realized, was under attack. Still, we sailed on. We passed the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island, all eyes glued on the two towers, while smoke billowed from one orange fireball with green around the other. Paper and shrouds of glass began to rain down on the streets, and thick black soots coated much of the sky. I tried to picture Mike and his best friend, Michael Tucker, or Tuck, as we called him, who also worked at Cantor, raced down the stairs to safety. When our ferry docked in lower Manhattan, we were instructed not to get off. Instead, we would take on people who had fled the Trade Center in nearby office buildings and head back to New Jersey. I looked for my brother and Tuck in the crowd on the pier. If anyone could escape that building, I thought, it would be those two guys. Mike had lived in Waits since high school and was a great basketball player. And his friend Tuck was big and strong as the guys on the Syracuse University football team. As we sailed back to New Jersey, the smell of death and burning plastic began to fill the air. But nothing prepared us for what happened next. We watched in stunned silence as the South Tower collapsed in a massive swirl of ash. It was 10.05. Less than a half an hour later, the North Tower fell, leaving us in, in words of Bruce Springsteen with nothing but an empty sky. We soon learned that there had been other attacks. Shortly after 9.30 a.m., hijackers had crashed a plane into the Pentagon. The United States military headquarters outside Washington, D.C., killing 189 people and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, passengers on the fourth plane, known as Flight 93, brought down their hijacked jet in a field when they realized it was heading for either the White House or the Capitol. All 44 people on board died. That morning, my brother's three children and thousands of others were called from their classrooms. My niece, Reagan, then eight, remembered an unfamiliar teacher arriving at the door during art class. Come with me, please, he said, and bring your belongings. When Reagan and her brother and sister got home, their mother was in the driveway, her face ashen. They went inside and turned on the TV. As a child, I'd never seen those two buildings before, Reagan says. Flames and chunks were tumbling down. Your father is in there, my mother managed to say. Then she burst into tears. A decade later, those memories are still raw from everyone who lived through that day. As time I hear, any time I hear 9-11, it just brings everything back, says John Pollinger, who was one of the police chief in Middleton, New Jersey in 2001. His town of 68,000 lost 37 people that day. Pollinger was at the ferry landing when my boat got back. People were shell-shocked. Stunned, covered with dust, he said. I told my detectives, get on the ferry, go over there, see what you can do. In the end, there was little anyone could do besides tend to the grieving families and try to recover the bodies of those who had died. My brother's children have had to grow up without their dad. 
He has missed their field hockey games, skateboarding competitions, proms, and graduations. He didn't live to see their funny text messages or Facebook posts. Most important, he missed seeing the extraordinary young adults they've become. Thousands of other families have faced the same heartbreaking loss. More than 400 firefighters and other rescue workers who went into the burning buildings to try to save people like my brother Mike and his friend Tuck also died on 9-11. Countless others spent months at the site, which came to be known as Ground Zero, searching through the rubble for bodies and trying to give families some measure of peace. <clears throat> Many Ground Zero workers have since developed several lung ailments from the pollutants they inhaled. Some have died. Those remaining live with trauma of what they saw. If there's a silver lining, it's that our friends and people we didn't even know were there to look out for us. They stuck by us when we needed them most. That's what Americans do for Americans. My family and so many others lost a lot on 9-11. We also incurred a debt that we can never repay. In the days and weeks of September 11, after that attack, Americans were called to face new challenges. Even as countless individuals and communities united to comfort those who suffered personal losses, and our nation and local governments took measures to strengthen our security, students, teachers, and parents sought to understand what had happened and how the attacks had affected our nation and our place in the world. Students asked why people would resort to terrorism, why America, where America had been the target, and how our leaders would defend us. Teachers asked for assistance in helping their students make sense of this tragedy, as well as questions about the Muslim world in the Middle East, and the reasons and risks of military action in Afghanistan. Parents asked for advice and counsel on how to discuss the tragedy and subsequent events with their children and how to reassure even the youngest child about their safety. Since then, the United States military has caught many of the people who helped plan the attack. A total of 19 terrorists attacked the planes, hijacked the planes. All of them were from the nations in the Middle East. They belonged to a terrorist group called Al-Qaeda, and they were led by Obama, or Osama bin Laden. <laughs> States and its allies are countries that give us support within fighting the war in Afghanistan. That's where Al Qaeda was based. Many top Al Qaeda members have been captured or killed. On May 1st, Osama bin Laden was killed by United States troops in Pakistan. He has been hiding in that country for years. <clears throat> Our president, Barack Obama, said. The death of bin Laden marks the most important achievement to date that our nation's effort has had to defeat Al Qaeda. In times of tragedy, you listen, you think, and you learn. You might ask yourself, how can I take what I've learned to help me become a better person? Through life experiences and tragic events, you begin to realize what really is important in life. Our freedom, democracy, patriotism, liberty, justice, life, love. Spend time together with your family. Express your feelings. 
talk about how you feel. Be a person who's willing to listen to others. Provide reassurance, comfort. Contribute and help others. Work hard and try your very best. In your everyday life, whether it be on a job, a student in school, a parent, a brother or sister, a first responder, a civic leader, a school leader, a teacher, it is important to realize whatever you do, go over and above to do it to the best of your ability and be job, a helping hand and help others along the way as well. Have fun responsibly and be happy. We must never forget what happened on September 11, 2001. Just saw a plane circling the building. Yeah. 